Hey guys, what's up? What's up? It's me, Sean John. You're moving to CEO. I uh, just wanted to jump on this morning and spend a few minutes with you as we talk about uh, because I think right now we're about two weeks into uh, the year and uh, not just the month of January, but the actual year. So uh, that's about 50 weeks left. And so now we can start talking about uh, what we want our business to look like. Uh, where's our business now and what what are we doing wrong what could we we be doing better uh, to better grow our business model so there are some things that you could do that can make your business a lot better uh, small things like small tweaks that you can do for your, your moving business that'll change the game for you uh, that'll generate more leads help you to convert those leads uh, help you to get better referrals from customers uh, help you to make customers your your loyal fans and not just uh, customers of your business. You want to make them fans. So one thing we focus on is how to turn your customers into fans. Uh, so the difference between a customer and a fan is that a fan, uh, a person who's like a, you know, just a, a mega fan of you or your business. Just think about the artists and whatnot. And if you're a fan of an artist, you know, how do you treat that artist? How do you think about that artist? You know, what are the things you say and feel about that artist, right? There's some emotional ties going in. And by the way, thank you for all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. And let's continue to grow the channel. I really appreciate that. Also, thank you to everyone who's purchased uh, the Move and Success Masterclass and you're enrolled in the class and the VIP. Uh, by the way, you get VIP coaching for a year for free if you enroll in that class. And uh, thank you for everyone who's about to buy the course. Uh, I really appreciate you guys and can't wait to help you grow your business. Uh, so uh, you want to turn your customers into fans. You don't want them to just be customers of your business. You want them to be fans of your business. Now, what does that mean? Again, so think about if you're just a casual fan of a certain artist or actor or whatever, right? So you might be like, you know what? I'm a casual fan of, I don't know, let me throw an artist out there. Uh, boy, I don't really listen to a whole lot nowadays. Let's just say you like uh, Morgan Wallen, right? So you're a Morgan Wallen fan, and but just casually, right? So you like some of his songs, you don't like some and uh, you, you know, you're not gonna spend a certain amount of dollars to go to a Morgan Wallen concert, right? Uh, but let's say you're a, a Taylor Swift fan, right? Now Taylor Swift fans, her fans are nuts, right? And uh, I, I was about to say not in a bad way, but who knows? Her fans are nuts, right? And they're spending $500 for a ticket to sit in the nosebleed, right? So uh, even more, 1,000, 1,500, that's crazy. And uh, so I don't even know enough songs to justify that. So, uh, but her fans are nuts, right? So if you say anything negative about Taylor Swift, bam, they come to her defense, right? Or if you ask about an artist, bam, they introduce you to Taylor Swift, right? Swift, right? And uh, Tay Tay, I call him, right? <laughs> Tay Sweezy, and uh, they're gonna introduce you to Tay Tay. And they're gonna they're gonna be like take take this take take that, and you'll instantly know that this person is just a casual listener of take take. They're you know they're a diehard fan of take take right. Everything's about take take. They got take take on on the phones on the walls. They know all the take take songs. They're up at midnight waiting on one song to drop. And so, and and there's nothing wrong with that. Those people love that that person and that music. That's fine. Uh, but I want you to think of your customers becoming as convinced and as obsessed with uh, your company as they are with Tay Tay. So, in this sense, right? If if your customer casually use you uses your business or use you one time and you, you didn't do a great job, but they were okay with it, they didn't really complain. They got moved, the job was done, right? But nothing extravagant, nothing stood out, right? And so if they're around someone and someone's talking about moving, they're probably not gonna recommend you. Is that safe to say? They're probably not gonna recommend you. And uh, because they're so, they may not even recommend you know anyone because they're casual, right? But if you have someone, you did a great job, you, you sent them a thank you letter after you moved them, you check back with them every six months, 
uh, you know, just to, just to check on them and their situation. You do follow-ups, you know, things like that. And, you know, you, you send a letter eight, six, eight months from there just saying thank you for letting us move with you. Anytime in the future you need to move with you again, please think about us, right? Please allow us to come out and move with you. And uh, I always say it that way. I always say, allow us. Thank you for allowing us to come out. Because I always want the customer to feel like it was their decision. Right? Does that make sense? I always want the customer to feel like it was their decision to let us come out. And they did a good they did a, they did a good deed and they made a great choice. And so we always say thank you for allowing us to come out. Because I want the customer to go, well, you know what? I did allow them to come out. And I'll, I'll allow them again. So it's just mind games when it comes to sales, right? Just uh, sales vocabulary. Uh, like, you know, we don't say deposits. We say, eh, I don't want to give all that away. <laughs> but get into class. If you get into master class, you'll learn all this. And I'll teach you how to sell over the phone. That's probably one of the most important things you'll be thinking about that in the future. If you want to get a video on selling, how to sell, how to close these sales, uh, drop a one in the comments and we'll go back and I'll do a video, I promise. And so, but you want your customers to be raving fans of yours to where whenever someone mentions a moving company, they think about you. Whenever someone talks about, uh, you know, experiences, they think about you. That, that Because here's what you're going to get. Because a lot of you get customers who don't want to pay, always complaining, watching your crew. And it's annoying, right? And you can sense that it's probably going to be a bad move. You're, you're on pins and needles just to make a few bucks it's not even worth it uh, there are some jobs it's better to leave the money behind than to go and do the job and so again when you get that you want your customers to become raving fans because three things raving fans do right that normal customers don't do and I gave you a clue right but number one they pay whatever you ask they don't add, they don't have issues with cost they pay whatever you ask You've had customers like that? I have. They're my favorite. Number two, they tell others about you. How many referrals are you getting? If you're not getting a lot of referrals, you're not good enough. They tell others about you. And number three, number three, after they pay whatever you ask, pay premium, tell others about you. The third one is they're loyal to you. Meaning that whenever they move again, you're the first call. In fact, they'll probably ask for you by name. I've had it. I know you know what I'm talking about. So that's why you want to build a fan base as opposed to a customer base. That's why your logo is so important. That's why your mission statement for your business is so important. That's why your website being a good looking website is so important. That's why you having the trucks you need, the crew you need, so important. That's why your uniforms on every job, still seeing guys out there with no uniform, I call them the invisible movers, the unknown movers. I see you moving, I need a mover, but I don't know who you are. I have no idea who you are. Because you don't have any logo on your truck, you don't have any information on your trucks or your shirts, right? So all those things apply when it comes to branding, marketing, and creating a fan base. So you want to work on creating a fan base in the moving industry. I know it sounds strange, but if you can do this, you can easily make a high six to low seven figures a year. Easy. Easy because they're going to go out and work for you. These customers are going to work for you. Apple customers work for them constantly. Check out my new iPhone. Check out this. Oh, let me show you what it does. They're not even employed in the store. But every time you see an Apple computer, they, they have their laptop up and you see the Apple design. You see them in the gym or the store with the new phone, they want to tell you all about it. What they don't realize is they are employed by Apple without being employed by Apple. They work for Apple without them working for Apple. They're the best type of employee Apple could ever ask for because they do referrals for free. They get no insurance, no off days, no overtime, no pay, no salary, no anything. And you guys work for free. So the same thing can be done in, hello, the moving industry. Where you guys are not, you know, you guys are hiring customers and they're working for you for free.
So you got to create that fan base, guys, okay? So I got to go hit subscribe, hit thumbs up, see you on the next video, and click the link in the comments if you want to get enrolled in the Success Masterclass. See you then.